Yes, God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. I honor you. I bless you, Lord God. Father, you are the keeper of my soul. You are the keeper of all of our souls. You're the, oh, Lord, you are the only way that we've been able to make it to this very point where we are right now. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, for an opportunity for us to come together, to be able to study your word. But I thank you even more so that we have an opportunity to give you praise and to honor you and bless you, Lord God. As we learn more about you, Lord, we'll learn that fear is not what we have to live in. Father, I thank you. Lord, I just praise you. Lord, I ask that you would, as I decrease, because I must decrease in order to bring your word. But as I decrease, that you would just increase and that your word will not return void that goes out, that it will accomplish everything that you intend for it to accomplish. Father, I thank you. I praise you. I pray for our pastor. I pray for every member on the call. I pray for our members who are not on the call. I pray for every need, Lord God. In Jesus' name, I pray and I thank you, Lord. Amen. Ooh, breathing underwater. I'm telling you, I feel like... <laughs> I feel like for sure that I am breathing on the water. And sometimes I feel like I'm not even breathing under the water. I just need to just get their breath from somewhere. Just, just, just grab me one from somewhere. All right. We are still talking about uh, breathing on the water. And when I found out <laughs> that I was in fact teaching tonight, I said, oh, wow, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I'm like Sister Tab. The only thing I could do was just say, all right, Lord, thank you. Okay, if that's, that, if that's what I'm doing, that's what I'm doing. So I always ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to talk about? Because you know, I could just get on here and I could just start talking. And I know what our series is about, and that is about uh, breathing on the water. And we're using the step, 12 step um, to healing and um, recovery as the background for what we are studying. And so, as you know, we have been talking about these steps. And I, ha I can recall pastor saying that, there are, that even though there are 12 steps, you might be still, you may be on step five, but you still might be working on step number two. You might have made it to step number 12, but you still are having problems with step number three, okay? And so I figured as much as that could happen, when the Lord dropped something in my spirit this morning or late last night and then early this morning again, cause it was like, Lord, is that what I'm supposed to talk about? And it was like, yes. So we've talked about step one. And as I have done research, I find that there are different organizations who use the 12 step model, but they may be in different orders. So the one that I like today, I like these little feet. And first of all, most of them, I think all of them probably start out that you admit that you were powerless. So we have done this. We have, at least we have audibly said that we are powerless, okay? We admit we were powerless over our addiction, over whatever it is in our life that's, that's, that's a problem for us. And our addiction, or our sin of whatever it is that's causing us to have problems in our lives. We had to admit that we were, that our lives had become unmanageable as a result of that, okay? Now, maybe you've gone on to another step and maybe you're still working on that because sometimes we'll go back and we'll kind of pick some stuff up. We use the analogy all the time that, you know, we go to the altar, we pray, and we think that we have, gotten a breakthrough or we, or we feel a breakthrough and we'll shout and dance and do everything else. And then on the way out, it's almost like we say, oops, I forgot something. Let me go back to the altar and let me get my stuff. And we go back and we get our stuff, okay? But let's, let, let, let's at least 
get through number one and say that we have admitted that we are powerless over the thing that's, that's, that's causing us a problem. All right, step number two, we have found hope. We came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity and get us out of the sin and the mess and the muck and mire that we are in, okay? I see I haven't gotten to what the Lord told me to talk about yet, but let me at least go through those things, all right? Uh, oops, what did I do? I'm on number three. Okay, good. Okay, then uh, we surrendered. We made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understand God to be God. All right? For some reason, I'm having a... Okay, there we go. All right, then, I, this one was interesting when it says to take inventory. Now, we haven't really dealt with this, but I, I'm, I'm assuming that pastor is going to deal with this, but I want to just talk about it for a minute as I mark on to where I actually am going. That we made a searching and a fearless moral inventory of ourselves. We have to look within ourselves to know what it is that's causing us the problem that we are having. Why are we doing the things that we are doing? Why are we not doing the things that we should be doing? All right? Uh, I'm not going to get into that because I want to make sure that I spend a, a, a good amount of time on what the Lord really told me to talk about. The next one is to share my inventory. We admit it to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Now, steps number four and number five. You're going to get some more about that, but I want to get on to where the Lord told me to go. Uh, wait a minute. My. Oh, sorry. Okay. Then become ready. We entire, uh, we were entirely ready to have God remove all of these defects and characters. And again, pastor's going to talk about these things. So I'm going to talk about what the Lord told me to talk about, okay? So I guess that's why I'm kind of, you know, kind of fumbling and stumbling because the Lord didn't tell me to deal with those steps. He told me to talk about humility, being humble, okay? So we ask God, okay? This is step number seven on this one. Humbly ask, we humbly ask God to remove our shortcomings. And so tonight from my scripture, oops, I'm going in the wrong direction, is from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, and that should be verse 14. It says verse 1, but it should be verse 14. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and restore their land. Now, I know this is a scripture that we quote a lot. And when the pandemic started about 18, 19 months ago, this was a scripture that we heard and saw on a regular basis. And now 18 months, 19 months into this pandemic, it's kind of like people have kind of forgotten that they were praying this prayer, all right? They've gone back to some other things. At one point, people were praying, they were hum humbling themselves, they were seeking the face of God, they were trying to live a little bit better because they were thinking, oh, Lord, if COVID gets me, I don't know if I'm ready. Let me be ready because I don't, you know, when you, if I, I can remember, it just seemed so unreal when we saw all the stuff that was going on in New York and they had these refrigerated trucks and they were talking about, they were loading bodies onto these trucks and then there was a picture that came out that showed this mass grave with all these wood-looking wood, wood coffins that were going in it. 
And for a while, people kind of got a little bit better. People got on Zoom and they were attending Zoom church because we weren't going to church. It was a whole new thing. People were Zooming to church, Zooming to church, Zooming to church. And then when things kind of, you know, lifted a little bit and got a little bit better. And then when the um, um, vaccine came out, and even just a little bit before that, because you know, the numbers had started to go down, but when the vaccine came out and then people started just doing all kinds of stuff and just taking off their mask and just going here and going there and going here, there, everywhere and all these different places. And still they weren't going to church when church is reopened. They weren't even coming on Zoom anymore. It was like, oh, I get that sometime. They probably record it. I, 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 I catch it later. And you know how many of them caught it later? Very few of them. And so now we are in a different time period where while the numbers are going down, with it being fall, it seems like they're also going up again. And so you kind of, it's kind of like you are betwi betwixt and between. It's just like, are the numbers going up or are they going down? Are they going this way or are they going that way? Lord, what is going on? And then aside from COVID, it seems like once people came out, some people just lost their natural mind. There's a shooting here. There's a shooting there. People are driving crazy. People sitting out in the driveway or sitting on the street just waiting on somebody to come out of the house. Somebody goes barreling down the street, not paying attention to where they're going, don't care if they hit anybody or whatever. And people are just sitting in the car waiting for somebody to come get in the car. And before you know it, they are absent from the body. The scriptures tell us to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now, if you're one of these people like pastor talks about that at an early age, you did something, but at an early age, that was the only time you did something. I don't know. And I would certainly hate to be a person in that person's shoes, standing before the Lord and the Lord not really knowing me. So this is the scripture again that the, that the Lord gave me. And you know me, I have to figure out what, what things mean. So to be humble, some people say humble, to be humble, humble, it's like having or showing a modest, or a low estimate of one's own importance. Now, I was reading some things about being humble, about having humility. And there were some people saying, well, you know, it's, it's kind of a religious thing because being that way, you might set yourself up to be walked over by some people or trampled upon by some people or you're not assertive enough, or your self-esteem is low if you are too humble. But I don't think that that's really what that means. Just because you're being modest, just because you have decided that you, your importance is not greater than another person's, because that's the definition, definition of, of, of being humble that I like, is that you have, uh, have understood and you know that yes, other people are there and they have an importance that's as great as yours, if not greater, all right? So I came across some other words, uh, cause you know, I like words and some other words for, the, for, this, for this thing being, uh, that we're talking about being humble, to be me. A lot of times we don't like to be meek because meek sounds like uh -uh, somebody gonna get over on me if, I, if, I'm, if I'm too meek. 
Well, what does the scripture say about being meek? Does the meek do what? What does the meek do? They inherit the earth. So it must not be that being meek is a terrible thing, okay? But then also one of the other words that I like is being respectful. Being a teacher, that's one of those things that, that's one of those words that we talk about all the time is being respectful. Because it's amazing how an adult can be in a room, in charge of a room, and a child can come in and be disrespectful. And they can't, and, and, and they don't even read well. <laughs> they don't know how to add, subtract, multiply, or divide, but they're being disrespectful to the person who can teach them how to do those things. I, I, I have had a day. Submissive. We talked about being submissive a while back. Usually when you hear that word submissive, it's a term that comes in a relationship. And usually that relationship is a marital relationship. All right? And people, because they've had some bad experiences with some folks they've been in relationship with, whether it be a husband or a wife or an intended, we still want to kind of shy away from that word because it's like, mm -mm, I'm not going to let them get me. I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them before they get me. Okay. And so going back to being humble, a lot of times we kind of, we got him and Hall being humble because there are just some other terms out there that make it seem like, no, nah, you don't know these folks like I know them. I can't be humble with these people. You know, people that look like me, people who are just a tad lighter than me, people who are darker than me. Oh, no, I can't be too humble with those kind of folks. And I sure, the folks that look like the palm of my hand, uh -uh, I'm not going to be humble with them because they'll have me out here running for my life or they'll have somebody sitting up in court trying to decide whether they had the right to shoot me down. So we just don't want to be too humble. Being unassertive. Well, as a Black woman who grew up in the 70s and got my start in the 60s and began very, very much in the late 50s, being unassertive was not something that you wanted to be because you had to stand up for yourself. You had to let these folks know, mm -mm, you can't talk to me like that. I don't know who you think this is. It's not, I'm not one of them folks from way back then. Mm -mm. You know, be modest. Again, usually when we think about modesty, or think about being modest, a lot of times we're thinking about dress. But I can remember uh, 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 Sister Sharon talking about uh, people with this false modesty or this false humility that they don't want to acknowledge that they are good at something or they are good at it, but they are wanting to say, oh, no, you know, it's bad me up and so and so and so. No, God made you good. You, you, are, you, are, you were made in the likeness of him. So if God is good and he made you and he put something in you, you need to let that, you need to let that shine. You need to let your light shine. Just like what Mother Lee said. She had her flashlight out that day and had her little phone out and had the light on. And she said, let your light shine. Don't be self or uh, uh, unassuming. This next one, I didn't, I'm not talking about all these terms, but this term self-deprecating, who knows what that means? Most of us, right? What does it mean to be self-deprecating? What's in the chat? Who knows what it means to be self-deprecating? Tell me, somebody talk to me, because I sure am... Uh, you just can't take a compliment, okay? That's that's part of it. What else? When you are self-deprecating.
to Kaya. I'm waiting for her to give me a response. What, is self, what does it mean to be self-deprecating? When you talk down on yourself, ooh, I'm just so ugly. Ooh, I'm just so this. Ooh, I'm not smart. Oh, everybody else is this. Everybody else is that. Why would we do that to ourselves? Why would we do that to ourselves? People are, that is not what the Bible is talking about when it tells us to be humble, okay? To be, I, I like this word, sycophantic. Uh, to be a sycophant, I was watching the news the other day and they were talking, to, uh, we've been socialized that way, you're right. Uh, to be a sycophant, I heard somebody the other day talking about the sycophants of, uh, of, of Donald Trump. These are people who do whatever it is to get his uh, approval, okay? And so I still don't think that that's what it is. But I'll tell you what it's, what it's not. Humble is not being proud, overly proud, and it's not being overbearing, okay? So let's talk a little bit about humility, and then we're going to go on and talk about some, some other stuff. So humility is a modest or uh, low view of one's importance. It's freedom from pride and arrogance. Okay, negative talking about ourselves. And a lot of times that does start out in childhood because unfortunately, and, and especially now that I'm in uh, elementary school, it used to be when I taught middle school and high school, I would see kids who had a bad view of themselves. And I always wonder, where did that come from? You all are but 12, 13 years old. Has your life been that bad? You know, what is going on? But now that I'm in elementary school and I see kids who are not as tall as this table where I'm sitting and they are big enough, they, they aren't any bigger than, uh, just a little bit bigger than Elizabeth and I could just pick them up and set them, on, set them on my knee. Little bitty kids like that. But it's amazing how little bitty kids like that are already talking down on themselves. They are already, you know, have a low self-esteem. They are not being humble, but they just have low self-esteem because somebody, mama, daddy, grandmama, granddaddy, aunt, uncle, neighbor, uh, somebody has talked down to them and they don't have any confidence in themselves to the point that even as a second grader, even as a first grader, they have already given up on reading. And it's like, how can you give up on reading? And you're just in the first grade. You haven't even really started learning. You haven't even learned how to do it yet. And you've already given up on yourself. Okay, hey, I'm going to work with this. Hold on. All right, so being humble, it does not mean having a poor opinion of yourself, but rather accepting yourself and your many good qualities, as well as accepting your limitations and your not necessarily good quality, okay? You recognize that others also have good qualities and that they are equally valuable. And that, uh, that, that last statement is what I think being humble is all about. I said, we have a team today who didn't want to write a thank you card because she was convinced that her handwriting was ugly. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, it, it just amazes me. And, and I, I look at us because most, I, I don't think we have anybody on this call who is not, uh, who's not a black person, who's not African-American. And I, you know, sometimes we say that other folks, that their children this and their children that and their children the other and this, that and the other and so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. But somewhere as black people, we are dropping the ball. We not only are dropping the ball, some of us have just flat out dropped the ball and we're not looking for it. The ball has just rolled away on across the street over into the, uh, into the ditch, into the uh, uh, thing where the water goes down 
and, and we aren't even looking for it. We aren't even trying anymore. And, but yet and still we say that we, we, we love God, that we believe God, that we go to church and we, we, we in church sometimes all day long before COVID. And some churches have gotten back to the habit of being in church all day long, but we are still missing something. We're still missing something. So I go back to that scripture, Second Chronicles, chapter seven, verse fourteen. And how many of you know what a one-hit wonder is? A one-hit wonder. That's a person or a musical group that had one song that was great big old song, but they never came out with anything else. They had that one song, okay? I was listening to a song the other day um, and it's in a commercial and I hear it uh, over the years, I've heard it. And it's this song that's called Sunny. And it's interesting that Roy Hebb he never put out another song that made it. And I want to say that was really his only song. He was the nephew of a sorority sister of mine who lived up in Humboldt. But as, as popular as that song has been over the years, that was the only song he ever put out. Now you wonder, why she's talking about that? I'm talking about that because we have a scripture that we quote on a regular basis. And it's almost like we are, it, Christians, a lot of us, we are one scripture wonders. We know one scripture, one scripture. We don't know the scriptures above it. We don't know the scriptures under it. We don't know what was going on. The only thing we know is that the scripture says, what, if my people, who are called by my name, okay? But humble themselves and pray. That, that, that's, that's, that's all we know about it. And I don't know if we've ever taken the time to really separate that scripture out to really see what's going on. Because even though that is one scripture, it's a whole lot going on. And it's a whole lot going on in chapter seven. Now, you know, I always like to give you all some homework. So I'm going to tell you to make sure you read chapter seven. It was, a, it, was, it was during the time when Solomon was king and he had built the temple. And when the, when the scripture opens, I'm going to tell you a little bit of it. When the scripture opens, he had prayed and then the glory of God came down. That's Shekinah glory. Okay. But it was a lot of stuff going on. Why did God's Shekinah glory come down? What did the Lord say to, 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 to Solomon after he prayed? What did the other folk think about some things that were going on? It's a, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a whole chapter. And it's only maybe about 22, 23 verses. I think it's 22 verses. Or 28 verses, maybe. I think it's 22 verses. Let me look. Okay, I think it's 22 verses. So let's, 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 let's look at it, let's, let's dissect that verse. But before we do that, let me just say this. Humility, remember I said this the other day, it's not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less, okay? So in that scripture, there are four things that the people who are called by my name have to do. The first thing you have to humble yourself. You have to humble, humble, um, what's the difference? Just right. Humble yourself, humble yourself. Either one is probably okay. You have to humble yourself. What does it mean to be humble and, and as it relates to the Bible? What's it talking about? There, there are bunches and bunches and bunches and bunches of scriptures in the Bible that talks about being humble, that talks about humility. I know one that says God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to those who are humble, okay? What does that mean? Somebody? What does that mean? 
Is anybody on the on the on the? Am, am I the only one here? Right, let me not. Is anybody? <laughs> is anybody else here? Okay, well let me ask you this: When pride comes, what comes? Disgrace. Okay, but when you are humble, wisdom comes. Okay, let's see. Those who don't think of themselves as better than someone else. Okay, okay, that'll work. Okay. So when we humble ourselves, what do we have to do? It almost seems like number one and number two are things that need to happen together. Why would you think that humbling yourselves and praying, why, how, why, how do you think those two could go, go hand in hand? Somebody, do you have to humble yourself to pray or can you just come boldly to, to the throne always? What do you have to do? Do you have to humble yourself to come before God? I think so. Now, I don't know what's going on in the chat, but I think that you do because see, sometimes we think, especially, especially, if we have gotten a little bit of education or we made a little bit of money, okay, what does it say? Take humble, take, take you out, okay, to take, okay, it's, oh, I like that, Mother Lee. It takes you out of the equation. When I think about praying, and as I was saying, if we made a little money, if we've gotten a degree of some letters or something behind our name, if we've gotten some extra long hair hanging down to our, to our hips, if we've gotten some fancy nails, if we got some jewelry, if we belong to a sorority or a fraternity or a club or whatever, it seems like sometimes that we don't think that we have to, we have to pray. We don't humble ourselves. It's almost like to God, we don't want to give ourselves to God like the son says, give yourself to Jesus. It's like we don't want to do that. And I don't understand, I don't believe that God can truly do for you in your life what you want to have done if you can't humble yourself to him. So we have to do some things in order to pray, to get into a uh, situation where we will want to pray. We have to sometimes turn the TV off. We have to sometimes um, take some time away from Charles. I take some time away from Lexi. We got to do, um, we have to, we, we, we have to go within ourselves and admit, like in steps two and three say, you have to admit that you've got some stuff that you yourself cannot handle. And a lot of times I think we want to make sure that we are handling it because as we say, because I'm a strong black woman, okay? Or I'm a strong black man. I just that nail and so and so and so. But being a strong black woman is not something that you can be without God. There are a lot, you know, you might be able to go and fight somebody, but that's not being strong. That's just being crazy and wanting to fight, okay? Being strong means that sometimes you, you have to show a little bit of weakness. And, and showing a little bit of weakness is like, okay, if this person is saying this, okay, I'm not saying anything because I'm not going to take it to that level. And you might look like you're weak, but you're not. You have more strength than that person 
who has taken it low and gone somewhere else with it. You might, just like I think about these people who have these guns, you might look strong because you've got a gun in your hand, okay? Yeah, you might have a gun in your hand, but what happens if somebody else has a gun and they shoot you before you shoot them, okay? What happens if you end up shooting somebody and then you don't get away or somebody tells on you or the camera saw you and they know exactly who you are and they knocking on your door or they running you down in the street to catch you and now you in jail and now you sitting up wanting somebody to put the house up for you to get you out because you're not strong enough to be in jail. Or when you go through the whole trial and all that kind of stuff and you get convicted and you're in jail for 25, 35, 85, 100 years, two, two, and, three life, uh, two and three life sentences that you get. And this is like, how you do that? You got two life sentences. You know, you only get one life. And then, you know, it's like if you die, and I guess if you were resurrected, you got to serve that resurrected life, you know, in, in prison or somewhere too. But humbling ourselves is deciding that God is above me, okay? And a lot of us don't like to put anybody above us. Remember, we were talking about the word being submissive. We don't want to submit to God. We don't want to submit to husbands. We don't want to submit to wives. We don't want to submit to any kind of authority. The police can't tell me what to do. You know, my boss, he can't tell me what to do. I, they came in late themselves. Who's going to tell? I, 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 you know, you know, I hear that all the time. She, your teacher, she can't tell me what she ain't just a whole teacher. My mom says, no one says, and your mama is not a teacher. And your mama is not doing maybe what she needs to be doing with you and because you don't know how to read yet and you 12 years old, okay? So they are saying, and I look, Okay, and so we don't want to submit to anybody. We want to be the, we, we want to be it. We don't mind if people submit to us. We don't mind if people submit to us, but we don't want to submit. And one of the things that you have got to do as a Christian, you have got to submit. If you go back and look in, uh, let's look at, uh, open your books to Second Chronicles. Open your Bibles to Second Chronicles chapter 7. And in chapter 7, the Lord had said after um, Solomon had um, made his, um, had, had, some, had, had given all the, the lambs and the things that he had given as a sacrifice. The Lord says, and this is from the NLT, it says, I have heard your prayer and your petition. I have set this temple apart to be holy. This place you have built where my name will be honored forever. I will always watch over it, for it is dear to my heart. At that point in time, Solomon was submitted, and he was pleasing God. But what happens when we stop submitting to God, and we start doing a whole lot of other things? I can remember uh, growing up, and I hear people talking about the Lord and they talk about people going and whoring out the other gods. And I know the first time I heard it, I was thinking, what are they saying? And it's like, why are they talking like that? But did you know that in the scripture, and I'm gonna give you an example right here. Go to Leviticus, that you need to buy, if you don't have, this is the Bible study, if you don't have your Bible, go get your Bible. Or in your phone, turn to it. Go to Leviticus uh, chapter 34, verse 15. 
I'm giving you a moment. Okay. And in that chapter, I mean, in that one verse, it says, oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought I said Exodus, but I meant Exodus. I said Leviticus, Tekiah said. Exodus 34, 15. But it's also in Leviticus. If you were in Leviticus, it also talks about the same thing. So let's look at it in Exodus. In Exodus 34, 15, it says, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they have gone a whoring after their gods. We go a whoring after things, and we make those things our gods. Turn to Leviticus. Leviticus 17 and 7. And they sacrifice not anymore their sacrifices to goats, after which they have gone a whoring. A statue age during 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 is this to them to their generation. There are so many instances in the Old Testament where it talked about the people of God going a whoring after other gods. And who what happened to Solomon? Right here in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, he's pleasing God. But what, what, what happened to, to, to Solomon? What, what did Solomon do? Somebody? Somebody? So anybody? Mother Solomon, Solomon went to marrying the other women who well, had who worship idol gods that turned his heart. Okay, so he went what? He went a whoring, trying to please please them women that he was in communion with, and they was wives now. Right. So he married them so that they father who was whatever whatever would not fight against him, which meant that he was no longer trusting in God. For his Absolutely. deliverance, he looking at if I get these women, they daddies ain't gonna come. So then they made him backslide. Right, exactly. So he was so equally yoked. And that's one of the things that we do. You know, we, we jokingly talk about Charles and Lexi and all of that, but it's not necessarily just Charles or just Lexi, but there are people that on Sunday mornings, what do they do on Sunday morning? They sleep in, they go to breakfast, they go to brunch, they wash their cars, they clean up their houses, they, uh, uh, what else, what are some other things folks doing on Sunday morning? They doing nothing, sitting out, just looking, riding around, you know, doing all kinds of things, smoking weed, all <laughs> kinds of things that people do on Sunday morning. What are people doing on Wednesday nights that they don't come to Bible study? They're, they're scrolling on their phones. They, 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 they are at the basketball games and they're and they watching football on Sundays. They are, they are doing some of everything. Everything has become more important than God. Everything has become more important than God. And they say that they are watching us on Zoom. How many people do I see on Zoom tonight? I see 12 people on Zoom We got tonight. 12 people. And three of them are in my house. Mm. <laughs> All right. We've got 12 people on Zoom tonight. You can't tell me that the internet is down across this city. Now, when I first went to my computer this evening, so I can't get on the internet. And I had to go and do something on my computer in a couple of days. But the internet is up, it's running. If I were to click on Facebook right now, it'd be folks just posting and posting and got all kind of crazy stuff going on, watching all kind of crazy videos, doing this, doing that, even watching, you know, some videos, it might be good. But we have, we, we, have, we have gone a whoring after other gods. There are people now 
who grew up in Christian homes, and now they are tinging little symbols on things. They are wrapped up in different garb, and they are doing this. That you've got people who are so black that they are worshiping our ancestors who are dead. We, <laughs> we, we, we've got people who are who are who, who are worshiping just nature itself. You know the 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 the, the, the natural things of the world have become their god. But god created the heavens and the earth. God created everything that's out there. Okay? Or he provided the raw materials for it and then he gave you the gave man the knowledge to be able to bring those things into fruition. But we are worshiping other God. We have gone whoring after other gods, other things. And if you go, and, and, and again, I definitely want you to make sure you can read Second uh, Chronicles, the seventh chapter. At the end of it, the question was is, is being asked about some terrible things that were going on. And why did the Lord allow some things to happen and this and that and the other? And they said that the answer would be because his people, these people who are called by his name, they have abandoned the Lord, the, uh, the God of their ancestors who brought them out of Egypt. Now, I'll say Egypt, but these people, this is where these people had come from. But, you know, we have a story of our own. We have an Egypt situation. And You've got people now who are so black that they don't want to worship the white man's religion. Okay? They say the white, I can't, they say we can't believe the same thing that white people believe. And I'm not telling you to believe the same thing that they believe because a lot of what they believe is not right. I have said for years, I don't believe that we believe in the same God. I said, I think we see different things. I said, through brown eyes, I think folks looking through blue eyes seeing something totally different. So that, and I know that's crazy for me to say it, and I probably shouldn't have said it, but I said it. But I just think that there are some people out here who have not humbled themselves. And they think of themselves way more than they ought to think of themselves. And they think of people like us and people who don't look like them way less. As though we are way, way, way less than who and what they are. All right? But I say that I don't ever want to be so black that I don't know God and that God does not know me. The God who made me black, the God who made them whatever else they might be, he had a reason for doing it. And I, there are some things that, as we used to sing that song, we'll understand it better by and by. Well, maybe we will, maybe we won't. There might be some things that once we get to heaven, the Lord may never tell us because it's not our business. It was what he wanted to do. I think in terms of being a parent sometime, or being a teacher, he has to say, why were you absent? Why this, that, and the other? Why you? It's just like, excuse me. Well, look, and especially when I came to school today, yesterday, and I had some different hair. Different kids were like, Miss Pearl, is that you? What's your name? Where's the other teacher? And one of one the white boy passed by me on the way out the door talking about, is that a wig you got on? And I look at him, it's like he was small enough. I could have snatched him up and thought him on out the door, but I didn't. <laughs> I just said, go home. And don't you sit, don't you be standing up in my class tomorrow because I'm, I'm going to call your dad and then we're going to talk about this wig and anything else we need to talk about. You know, so there are times when everything that the Lord has done, the Lord, I don't even think the Lord is. I, don't, I think if the Lord had wanted us to know, he would have already told us some things. There were some things that he could have had already put in this Bible 
if he really wanted us to know. But I think that there are some things that the Lord is saying, that ain't none of your business. That's my business. And she says, that's my business. <laughs> Look, it's not your business. I did this. You Just like, you know, he told Job now. He, you know, where were you when I was doing all this stuff? You don't have anything to do with any of this stuff. You know, I'm the one that told the, the, the water it can only come so far. Okay? I'm the one who hangs the sun in, 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 in the sky. And hung the moon, and I and, and I make it rise at the sun in the day. You don't ever see the sun at night, do you? The Lord is the one that's doing all of that stuff. Now you do. Now the Lord likes to play likes to play with us sometimes. You do see the moon sometimes in the morning, okay? But you don't ever see the sun at night, okay? But the Lord had a reason for doing those things, all right? And so the next thing that we need to do is seek his face. We need, just like we like to get up in other folks' face and got so much to say to them and be talking and a whole lot of stuff, we need to seek God's face. Now, we don't need to get up in his face like that and gonna, just going to tear God off. No, we don't do that. But humbly, <laughs> you go to God and, you, and God will allow you to talk to him because he knows that you're not that crazy. Okay, if you know him at all, seek the Lord's face. Spend, that means spend some time with him. You have some issues in your life and you want to get those issues taken care of. Okay? You got some situations in your life. You want those situations to no longer be situations. You've got some things that you want to do in the future. You got some questions that you have some answers about. You need some answers about this, that, and the other. Just a whole lot of things. How are you going to find out what the Lord is thinking? How are you going to find, get, get the Lord's attention? You can't do it sitting up at a basketball game. Or you can't do it, you know, uh, uh, somewhere out at the, at, the, at the nightclub. You know? You have got to seek God's faith. And it's not always just being in church. You have got to spend some alone time with the Lord. How else? Let me ask you this. If you've ever been in a relationship with either a man or a woman, as a man or a woman, how did you get to know the person that you were in the relationship with? You did it by doing what? spending some time with that person. And every time you were with that person, you were not always in a crowd of other people. You had to spend some alone time together. You had to spend some time talking. You had to spend some time being quiet together. You had to steal away sometimes and get away from the crowd and the noise and the this and the that and the other and give of yourself as far as your inner secrets and things like that that you want to share so that that person will know you. That's the same thing that you have to do with God. You have got to spend some real time with the Lord. You have got to talk to the Lord. And by the same token, you have got to let the Lord talk to you. Just like me and this, this lesson tonight. I wasn't planning on talking about humility or any such thing because I really wasn't planning on teaching this lesson tonight. But since I had to teach this lesson tonight, who did I need to ask? I needed to ask the Lord because this is the Lord. These are, these are, these are the Lord's people. This is the, I'm the Lord's. This is his word. I needed to know what he wanted me to talk about before I got up here and got to talk. All right. And then the next thing you have to do, if you are serious about really hearing from the Lord and seeing some changes in your situation, you got to turn some things around. Some of us have some wicked ways. Some of us are doing some things that we know we have no business doing. Okay. Some of us have turned a lot of those things around, but some of us still got some things that we need to work on. Okay? Uh, Brother Derek. 
I see your hand. Yes, uh, Mother Pearl. Yes, sir. I, uh, I'm going to try to answer uh, some of your questions you're talking about. I think a lot of us, uh, we forget how to, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, we forget how to praise the Lord. And the reason I'm saying we forget how we praise the Lord we used to, like, mothers and fathers back in the day used to, you know, go to the Lord and pray for the family. Now it seems like it's backwards. Uh, it's like we praising our children and we trying, you know, we trying to get, um, uh, we, we trying to get, um, what I'm trying to say, we trying to get they approval if it's okay to do this and do that, or get, just get approval, what I'm saying, get approval to, to, to worship the Lord, we lost track of time. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and our focus is not on the Lord. That's because that's the reason why a lot of us is, is having so many problems right. in our life. And studying, you know, we see we got problems at home, and we already know where to go, but sometimes we get out of our comfort zone against somebody else's comfort zone instead mm -hmm. of staying in the comfort zone that we used to be with, praising the Lord. And uh, and then we lose focus. You know, we let people, you can get, you can they say you're a God and man or God and woman. Sometimes you can meet a man or woman who can lead you away from Christ. You well, am? Instead, you know, just like you were talking about going to church on Sunday and everybody watching their car, watching the movie, staying at home. When we got it good, that's what we do. And then mm -hmm. when it leaves you, you can't beat us to the altar. You're right. And, um, and see, and, uh, and one of the things that we find ourselves doing too is that we try to be other people's God. We try to be God instead of letting God be God. And right. I, it's like you talk about with children. A lot of times we're not steering our children to the Lord. We're trying to solve all of their problems. We're trying to meet all of their needs. We're trying to do all these things. And as I say all the time, God does not have stepchildren. He does not have grandchildren. He doesn't have nieces and nephews. He only has children. Okay. And so when we are in God's way and it never works out well for people who get in God's way and try to help God. Okay. We are causing other people sometimes to not know the Lord. Like we say that we know the Lord or like we do know the Lord. You know, we, we, we want the Lord, they, they want something right then and there. And they don't want to wait for the Lord to, to bless them. So we go and we try to be the blessing for them. But let me go to this because my time is almost up. If we do these last four things that, uh, that are on that last slide, this is what God will do. Number one, he will hear from heaven. He will forgive their sins and he will heal their land. Okay. You want God to hear you when you're praying. Folks, I used to hear people talk about it. It seems like my prayers just hit the ceiling. They don't go any farther than the ceiling. Well, you want your prayers to make it all the way to heaven. Okay. And you want the Lord to hear you. You don't want the Lord to have turned the deaf ear on you. Okay. And if your sin is speaking louder than your prayers for help and this and that and the other are speaking, well, then I believe that the Lord is going to wait before he does some things. Because I know that there are people who are living right, as far as I can see, and they're still having to wait for some things. So I just can't believe that the Lord is going to answer the prayers of a rank center before he's going to answer the prayers of a person who is living righteously in front of him, all right? And then this is this part that, that we were really clinging to 
when COVID first started was healing our land, okay? Our land is just not just overrun with COVID. We have more land than that. Healing our land is healing our families, healing our situations at work, working and doing the things that, you know, uh, uh, growing the ministries that we are involved with. It's healing our bodies. It's anything that's not at optimum level where it could be, okay? Those are the things that need healing, okay? And if we do what the Lord has said to do, then he will do what he has promised us that he will do. All right? Any questions? Because I'm about to go over time and I want to make sure that I am respectful of the time. Are there any questions? Are there any comments? Well, let's do this. If you have, if you tune in late and if you are not able to get your uh, prayer request in, put in a short prayer request and we will have our closing prayer after our uh, parting song or after our uh, music. And then we will um, then call it a night. Mother Pertle. Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, I'd just like to um, just ask a question or make okay. an observation about when Solomon, because he uh, was married to those women who were pagan, mm -hmm. then you see the result of what happened with his children. Mm -hmm. That's when his son, his son kind of followed suit and did not really honor what God had said, Jeroboam, I mean, Rehoboam, uh, mm -hmm. he wouldn't even listen to his elders. Right. When people came to him and said, you know, don't treat us as harshly as your father did, because you remember Solomon had got wisdom. He got right. a double portion for asking for that. And so exactly. he allowed the influences of those women who did not believe in God or trust or in God that we know Yes. allowed them to influence him and in his decision and how he treated people and so exactly. his sons and his, his son saw that and then his son because he used to be a wonderful ruler but his son seeing how his father ruled then told the people no i'm gonna be as harsh as my father mm -hmm. because they didn't know i think that because solomon was so greatly influenced by other people you know, kinking it on Sundays and doing whatever during their time that didn't know the, the true heart of God and how to treat people to lead them in a godly way and hence the division of, of Israel into the 12 tribes, the 10, mm -hmm. 10 in Israel and two to Judah led to that split in the captivity of the Babylonian captivity. Right, right. Oh yeah, all right, sister. Look, next time we're gonna have you as the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Look, everybody's gonna get that turn. <laughs> but thank you, that because that is definitely a, a, a great comment that you just made, and that's why it's so important that if you know the Lord, act like you know Him. Just act like yeah. I mean, and and not even just act, know Him, and let other folks know that you know Him, because people are out here in this crazy world. They are looking for something. They don't even know. Some people don't even know they're looking for God. But you have him. And just like we tell people about the, 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 the 36 inch weave that we can get at the, at the beauty supply store, or, oh, girl, they got some number seven on sale at Walgreens. Or, oh, have you had this, had this, 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 this entree at such and such and such in restaurant? We tell them about everything else and tell them about how good and how wonderful it is, but we don't do the same thing for the Lord. We need to talk about the Lord and tell about his goodness. And, 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 I, and this is a terrible word to use, but I'm gonna use it because it goes with what I'm trying to say. We need to hike him up just like we hike this other stuff because God is not hype, God is real. All right, let's pray. 
Father, again, we thank you. We give you all the praise, all the honor. Lord, we thank you for your word because your word is true. We thank you, Lord, that you are a God who is not a man. We thank you, Lord, that you can't lie like a man can lie. So, Father, we honor you and we praise you. And I pray, Father, on this night, that tonight we would purpose within our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our spirit, that we will seek you, Lord, that we will turn from our wicked ways, Lord. We are those who are called by your name, Lord, and we want you to hear us from heaven. We want you to attend to the needs that we have. And one of the needs that we have, Lord, is the healing of our land. Father, I pray for families that are on the uh, Zoom Bible study tonight. I pray for fathers who are praying for their sons and daughters. I pray for mothers who are praying for their sons and daughters. I pray for husbands and wives who are praying for each other. Lord, I pray, Father, for this city that we live in, Lord. Lord, this is a city where almost every street in the city, Lord, as you get out into the city itself, there is a church. There is a church within five minutes of most every place we go, Lord. So that means that your people are here among us. Father, I pray, Lord, for your people, Lord. I pray, Father, for the people of this city who are not in fellowship with you. Those who don't know you, those who have not even heard the word preached or have even, or even heard your name called. Father, I pray, Father, for those people who are unsaved. Lord, I pray, Father, for those who are saved, Lord, but not living like they are. Lord, I pray, Father, for, 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 for every street here in Memphis, for every subdivision, for every neighborhood, for every section of town. I pray for this entire city, Lord. I pray for the county. I pray for the state. I pray for this nation, Lord. Oh, Father, we have such a problem right now with people hating so to the point that they will kill each other. Oh, Lord, I pray, Father, that they will come to know you and know that you are a God of love. I pray, Father, that they will see love in us and want to know what it is about us that makes us be the kind of people that we are. So, Father, I just ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would let love ab abound within us within our hearts, within our communities. I pray, Father, that the churches in the communities, Lord, that they are not just be buildings, Lord, but they will be people who are going out into the community, seeking those who are lost, seeking those, Lord, who need help. Father, I just thank you. I praise you, Lord God, that in this, in this, in the, in the season of Thanksgiving, that we will be thankful for any and everything, Lord, that you have done for us. Be thankful, Lord, for housing, for food, for clothing, for being able to have a church where we can go to, for living in a nation where it's all right to say that we know you, Lord, and we don't have to fear praising you at any point in time. So, Father, I thank you, Lord God. I praise you. I honor you. I bless you, Lord. And Father, I don't ask for anything for myself, Lord. I'm asking for the other people here on the call tonight. Whatever their needs are, Lord, I ask that you would attend to their needs. There are some who need money for businesses. There are some who need money for food. But there are some, Lord, who need money for a car. There are some, Lord, who need all kinds of things. The Lord, some people just need a hug, Lord. So Father, whatever it is that they need on this night, I pray, Father, that those are around, that those people who are yours, that we can be that hand extended, Lord, and help to meet those needs, Lord, through you. We are not you, but we are your hand extended. So, Father, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, and we want to be just like you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray, and I thank you. Amen.